Hello everyone, Pretzel here. Welcome to the playthrough of Might and Magic 6, The Mandate of Heaven. It's a fairly old game, but it's still one of my favorites. It's also a fairly long intro, so let's get to it. Having cheated death during the night of shooting stars, you find yourself as far from your village of Sweetwater as old Falagar's magic could take you. Three years have passed while Falagar imparted what knowledge he could to train you in your chosen professions. But the time came at last when he could teach you no more, and you have ventured into the world to seek your fame and fortune. Now, a world away from your lost home, you have stumbled across evidence of a terrible conspiracy involving a new religious cult. Five letters from King Roland to his wife Catherine, and a letter from the King of the Devils to a wicked traitor named Solman, have turned up in an abandoned goblin camp. Your fate seems inextricably bound to these letters and that awful night, and your role in the events to come may be larger than anyone could imagine. The tools you have are but a small sum of gold, your wits, and a lot of potential. The roads ahead are infinite, and all the choices are yours to make. So choose wisely. Good luck. So that was the intro. Our job will be to destroy the religious cult in a rock. Our second job will be to save King Roland. And our third job will be to kill the devils. Sounds fairly simple. But the game takes around 80 hours if you wanna do it on your own speed. So there we go. This is new Sorpagal. But uh, you will see in a bit that it doesn't quite look like this. This is a pre render. Which is a bit of a joke in itself. Um, we can quick start here or we can create our own party, so obviously we'll create our own party. Priorities, we will have to rename these characters because the default names kind of suck. There we go. Of course, the sorcerer will be named Tim, which is a Monty Python reference and a bit of a tribute to RPG in his playthrough. I have enjoyed very much. As for classes, we have. Uh, uh, well, we would like the knight instead of the paladin, really. Uh, the paladin is okay if you're not running with a cleric because of spirit magic and the ability to take body magic, but ideally, you'd be wanting uh, a character with a lot of hit points. And the knight fills that role fairly good. There's an archer. We could opt to run with a second knight. But I like the diversity of the archer. They're quite good on ranged. Though every character can be good on ranged. Yeah, I'll just go with the archer because I like them to have air magic. There's a cleric. And there's a sorcerer, and we'll keep those. Okay, so for stats, uh, there's one important thing to remember. When you fill in your stats for every character, um, you want the baseline to be 13. Every two points above 13 gives a small bonus to the stat in question. So what you want to do is every non-important stat on every character save points on that so the knight doesn't have doesn't need any personality, doesn't need any intellect. And we'll give that to his might. His bonus rule is there on 17. The archer only has 9 might, so we want to have baseline there. Cleric needs baseline. Sorcerer also needs baseline. That's my cat, who won't shut up. So we have to live with that.
We want to give everyone baseline speed and accuracy. The sorcerer typically starts with a high speed because he has uh, daggers as skill. Personality is not for the sorcerer, intellect is not for the cleric. So now we have everything in place to assign the last bits of our stats. Mm, I'm typically dropping the cleric's luck in every playthrough because there are these barrels around the world that you can pick up stats with for uh, basically every character and there's a well in Usorpical that gives plus 4 luck to every character we have so plus 4 that would give 13 which is baseline everyone needs 9 so they will end up with baseline luck and that's good enough So accuracy is very important for an archer, we'll try and give her 17 accuracy speed, same thing for the knight. Now we have two points left. I'll give it to the cleric for now. The sorcerer will pick up meditation later on. And for now we need the heals from the from the cleric. Intellect on Archer doesn't really matter much in the early game. You want her to have a good uh, speed and a good accuracy. So she can hit fairly often with the bow. So now we just need skills. The knight typically uh, will get a bow because that's 500 gold when you have to pick it up manually. Which is quite a lot in the start. And he wants a shield because of the armor class. I'm not going to give him chain because he starts out with leather, which is more than enough for now. The archer should get leather, everyone should get one armor class. And... It's always uh, the question of giving daggers or axe. Daggers are very fast, especially for an archer. Um, with a high speed stat. X is nice for diversity because we'll give daggers to our sorcerer. I'll go with a second character with daggers just for fast hits. The cleric in turn will receive leather, armor and spirit magic. That's not really a contest. Spirit magic is required at the start for bless. We don't really need mine until later on. Then the sorcerer will receive leather and water magic. Again, this is no contest. Water magic comes with cold beam as the starting spell, and that spell always hits, which is very crucial at the start because we will miss a lot of attacks. So this looks fairly all right. Um, might steal away one point of speed from the sorcerer and feed our cleric's personality for an additional stat bonus. Yeah, I'll do that. So everyone is set. And here we go. This is a uh, new Sorbigal. Looks quite a bit different than on the introduction. It says right here, welcome to new Sorbigal. First thing we want to do is equip our crap items we start out with and get rid of the stupid clubs. So there we go, we have 12 armor class on a knight uh, to start out with, that's not too bad. That's probably the best ring I've ever started out with. That's excellent. 5 accuracy, that will probably go to our archer. 2 bows we will want to pick up two additional bow skills which will cost a thousand gold and if we're lucky we can get a plus four bow which costs I think between five and six hundred gold if my memory serves Yes. Okay. it's been about two years since I've played this 
I play this game approximately every year and a half. I don't know why, it's mostly nostalgia these days, but I also really, really like this game. Yes. Okay. Just assign those spells. Plus 5 endurance. We're fairly lucky. And go straight to the knight. Basically you want the knight to survive whatever it takes because that's your escape route uh, when everyone else gets killed in a very short time span. Okay, so that looks fairly alright. We have our first quest item here. Now whenever you want to read something in this game, you left click on an item and then left click on the character. So then you can read this letter. Basically this letter, this letter reads that uh, there is a traitor in the inn in Usorpigal whom we have to talk to and over Potvello we give him the letter we receive 1000 gold and he gives us a quest to retrieve a candelabra from the abandoned temple which is a temple of Ba, and Ba is the religious cult we're trying to destroy. The abandoned temple is our first dungeon in this game, we will visit that shortly. But first we're gonna try and become a little bit stronger. This game is full of easter eggs and uh, hidden gems, like this fountain. You can drink from fountains and get a temporary boost of uh, a certain stat. So I just drank from that fountain, now I get plus 10 might. Afterwards you can run on top of this hill and you'll notice there to be a sword in the stone. If you try and get it out with another character, it will save the sword from budge. If you try with a knight, his might was boosted over 20 so he can get this 2 handed sword which we can sell. Every bit of cash early on in this game is fairly valuable. This person, this NPC, has a quest to deliver her missing daughter back to her. Thank you. And we will join the Guild of the Self, so we can buy spells there. We will join the Elemental Guild for the same for the same reason. This one gives us a quest to kill the Spider Queen. Both of these quests will end up in the abandoned temple. And we can complete those there. The rest of these houses are all trainers. We won't sell anything until we have a merchant skill on one of our characters. We join the buccaneers lair and the blades and kids. So we can buy skills there. Ah, you will notice here uh, on the second floor of the bank there is a trainer which uh, teaches air magic expert you will need that to progress with air magic and eventually learn the fly spell you can't get up there with any conventional means so you'll have to use jump or you can use the fly spell that I just pulled out of the wall And then you can train air magic, so I'll just save Hi. save this scroll for later. These houses on the side are all the um, I'm not actually sure what the word is I'm looking for. Well they train body, spirit and mind magic. It's that school of school of spells. This is the training hall. You will notice on top here the symbol of Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Just one of those small details. Close. This is the Buccaneers Lair, they only open at 6 pm. Good day. These are the Hi. Fire and Earth Magic Trainers. This fountain gives us a restoration of spell points, which means this fountain or this well will give us the plus luck bonus I talked about earlier. There we go. So as you can see, everyone is baseline luck now. 
achieve in a 16. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh huh. First creatures in this game. Typically, the first monsters you'll kill. We'll just put the game in turn based mode so by pressing enter. And we just shoot away. The way targeting works in this game, in turn based mode, is that every character gets one attack, be it a spell uh, or a melee attack. If you just press the attack button, so A for me, it will hit the first character in range, the closest NPC it can find. If you want to hit an NPC that's further away, you just hover your mouse over their body and shoot away. And that way you can do specific targeting. But do keep in mind, if I do this now, then I will still shoot the first goblin because he's in line of sight. It's only logical. There we go. That's our first experience over and done with. There's also an expert learning trainer here. It's still quite amazing how much I remember from this game. It's been a year and a half now. I sort of know where every trainer is. If I don't know exactly which house, it's at least every area. And I still remember where the trainers are. You can pick apples from the tree so you can get additional food. There's goblins behind us, I am fully aware of that. So we'll just run back, pause the game. And not see anything, so we have to go closer. There we go. We have to spend our initial gold to join the respective guild so we can buy skills and spells. But now we're saving up to buy the additional bow skill from a trainer in the next area, really. Which is in the... Uh, which is Castle Iron Fist. There is no bow trainer in the starting area here. Tim almost died there. Because Tim sucks, pretty much. That's normal, your sorcerers are usually your weakest characters at the start of this game. You can set a spell as the ready spell by clicking it and then pressing the first button here at the bottom. Yes. So whenever you press S, you cast a spell. That's the only hotkey you can assign for that. There's crates in the world. Typically you want to have disarm trap before you try and open these, but these are not trapped and not filled apparently. That's a bit unlucky. Normally we have some gold here. As shown with this chest. The rest of the items you just give to your designated uh, you. Typically the knight for me. You will also have the merchant skill. You want to give uh, some additional skills to your knight because your sorcerers are usually the ones that require the most skill points. This one has fire and water magic. I will try and let the archer focus on air and earth. Um, maybe let her have disarm and perception. Nor the cleric, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure yet. But the sorcerer will also have dark magic and he will need learning. You want a high level sorcerer. And the knight doesn't really have much to run around with. Could also give disarm and perception to him, but he will. Typically, you want to give repair to him because he's a knight. I know it doesn't really matter much, but I like to do that anyway. Some more goblins that spawned the moment we crossed the bridge. 
Also some mages behind us. There we go. So now we just cross the small brook here, or the small river. We pause the game. This is a bit of line of sight trick. Goblins or any other creature, maybe except except maybe water elementals or flying creatures, uh, are not able to traverse water, but they won't try and traverse the bridge, which is which is the obvious route. They will just stand there uh, and run back and forth, forth until we kill them. Keep in mind that this game is. Uh, Originally released in, I think, 1997 or 1998. If you look at the graphics, arguably you could say that it could have been 1992 or 1993. Because the graphics were dated even back then. Uh, I think 1998 was saw the release of Unreal as well. It's really... Uh, up the ante for video game graphics. There we go. Let's just finish up these last ones. Okay, we just need a bit more gold before we can buy that additional bow skill for the two remaining characters. There's still a goblin here. Whenever a creature is on low health, they will try and run away. There's also spells that can use fear which cause the same effect. Aha! That's a plus 5 cut loss. We'll give that to the knight. I don't know. Yeah, I think we have enough gold now. So we'll go to cost Lion Fist first. Buy that bow skill, then return. And then we're pretty much ready to tackle the first dungeon. I, al I, al I always like the early game in these games because you're rediscovering everything and you have, to be rem you have to be reminding yourself where the trainers are, what skills to pick up and there's the random uh, the random I don't know. item distributor always gives you one surprise at least every game. So now we join the Berserker's Fury Guild, and that's the last guild we need to, to learn new. train the bow. There we go. It's 500 gold, quite a lot, but. Yeah, no special bows except maybe the Elven Bow, but it's still too expensive. So for now, we'll just run with. Uh, 100 gold. I'm not entirely sure what to do with this. 5d2 or 4d2. I'll just go for the 5d2. I know I should have picked up merchant skill first to save some cash, but I'm just a bit impatient here, I suppose. And we're back in Usorbigal, we are broke. Literally. I think we'll have to rest. Which is three gold. Closed. 
Okay, now we just wait until the town hall opens. See what the bounty hunt is. It's a journey in mage. I think we can find those just a bit further on, uh, just a bit back on the map. Uh, the mayor, Frank Fairchild, gives us a quest to go to the Shadow Guild, which is fairly tricky instance, a uh, fairly tricky dungeon if I remember correctly. I don't remember doing that below level 10 even. So you might want to watch out for that. Okay. Everyone has a ready spell, so I'm just casting Wizard Eye to see on the minimap where the NPCs are. It's so much more comfortable shooting with four characters instead of two. That's why you always want to pick up bow when you're starting out. Really saves some time and effort. Running back and forth between the temple or resting. No journeyman mage just yet, but I think it's worth running around and about until we see one. These are only apprentice mages. They're not too strong, but if they come in large numbers, they can hurt you. There's goblins behind us too now. Oh yeah, those were the do uh, the goblin goblins from the docks. Sorry for the overlays here, but that's Razor comes. I just have to live with that. Some more apprentice mages. There we go. Still no journeyman, which is a bit unfortunate. They can spawn everywhere wherever there's uh, apprentice mages about. Okay, now I'll just loot these. I don't think I see any apprentice mages. I saw one spell that might have come from an apprentice, uh, a journeyman mage. So maybe it's worth trying to kill some of them. My roommate just informed me that a comet fell on her house in The Sims 3. That's very unfortunate. It's a regular mage, that's really bad luck. Oh yeah, I might have known because the journeyman mages cast cold beam instead of lightning bolt. I am a dummy. My girlfriend would agree. So... I think there's one more thing we can do. Ah, another chest. I forgot about this one. Of course, this has more gold. Of course. Purple liquid. I think purple liquid was... Luck or intellect, but I think it's luck. Or speed, no, it might be speed. I'll just give this to Sorcerer, yes, it's speed. Red liquid is might. Um, well, I'll give it to the Sorcerer too. Orange liquid is intellect, I think. So that's also a sorcerer, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. It's also archer. 
but yeah, I'll give it to sorcerer and an empty barrel. Okay. I think we might be ready now to enter the abandoned temple. We'll just rest one more time and see if we can try and pick up some more skills that we can use. An identify skill would be convenient, or at least a merchant skill to sell some stuff. So we enter the place with empty bags. This place only opens at 6 p.m. There we go. Identify. So we don't want to give this to. Um, the sorcerer. I'll give it to the same character with the merchant skill. So that's identify, that's merchant. And then we want. Perception and disarm on the. I'll give it to the archer. Or maybe the cleric. Hmm. You want to have perception and disarm on the same character. Because perception sees tra traps and disarm can disarm them, obviously. Perception also sees. Uh, um, what's it called? Secret rooms. Hmm. Knight will get repair later on. What I would like perception and disarm. Uh, I'll give it to the archer. Okay. We're pretty much done now. I will conclude this video here. I will just save my game to recording. And next video will be the abandoned temple. And the hopefully good conclusion with a positive outcome. So until next time, this was Pretzel and I hope you have enjoyed this first part of our playthrough of Mighty Magic 6.